Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes, and welcome to a discussion on how to get the most from scale practice. Today I'm going to be demonstrating and referring to the notes as they occur on the E-flat alto saxophone. Just be aware that everything I say in this tutorial applies equally to any single note instrument, including the B-flat instruments and the concert pitch instruments. Just be careful that when I say I'm playing a note C, that's actually E-flat concert. And for the bulk of today's discussion, I'm going to be referring to the G major scale as it sounds on the E-flat alto saxophone. So that's B-flat scale for the concert pitch instruments and a C scale for the B-flat instruments. My first concept in getting the most out of playing scales is the concept of if you can say it, you can play it. I'm a real believer in it's hopeless just wiggling your fingers on an instrument no matter how fast you can wiggle them or what dexterity you've got with it. If you're playing from the instrument only, not from your head and your heart, well you're not going to be playing music. You're definitely going to be doing some great gymnastic feats on the instrument and there's a certain element of the public that will enjoy watching a party trick or a circus trick on any instrument. But most people listen to music to be moved, to have an emotional experience, to be told a story, for someone to share their feelings with another person via their music. And to do that, you've definitely got to play from your heart and from your head, not just wiggling your fingers in some academic approach. And scales are the perfect example of a non-musical part of playing music if you let them be. One of the greatest players I've ever had the privilege to hear play live uh, is the Australian jazz legend Don Burroughs, an absolute legendary saxophone, flute and clarinet player here in Australia. Long since retired, but for 40 or 50 years was really regarded as Australia's number one jazz player and, and with every reason to. Absolutely world-class player, amazing instrumentalist. One of Don Burroughs's most classic quotes that I always remember is that scales free the fingers but freeze the mind. And I totally agree with that. You will find that your fingers become very strong and very... Um, nimble as you practice your scale, but it's so easy to switch your mind and your ears off and just be going and then go quicker and somehow or other give yourself a pat on the back and say, geez, I'm getting good, I can play my scales great. For someone listening to you playing, it's just like a bumblebee, you know, rattling on the, the glass on the window, just an annoying sound of a mosquito buzzing in their ear. There's no real musical communication. So please keep that in mind uh, with everything I say in this tutorial. It's all about playing music. A scale is just a tune. A major scale is just a song without words. And if you have any doubt about that, listen to a major scale played in descending order. If I now play those exact same notes in exactly the same order, but with a different rhythm, the rhythm of a famous Christmas carol, Joy to the World, have a listen to what we end up with. So those same eight notes, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A and G, when played just as a scale, sounds like that, when I play those same notes with a different rhythm. I don't play the notes in any different order, I don't double up on any notes, I play exactly the same notes. Now, I can guarantee you that your audience, whoever is listening to you playing the saxophone, will get a lot more enjoyment out of that second version of the G major scale than hearing you just run up and down frantically up and down the notes of the scale. 
So scales build technique, but they really don't build musicality. You've got to apply your scales immediately to a musical goal. Once you learn the notes in a scale and can play them at a, a reasonable speed, immediately start playing songs based on the notes in that scale. As far as technically improving on the saxophone or on any instrument with the scale, I recommend you get hold of a metronome. This is an independent hardware metronome. You can just, you're obviously watching me on YouTube. If you type into Google metronome, you'll find many free online metronomes that will count out the beats for you on your computer. But in this case, this is an independent metronome. I've got it set at 80 beats a minute. And the metronome you can see has a red flashing light for beat one of the bar. I've got it set to four beats to the bar. One, two, three, four. And also the pitch of the click is higher for the first beat in the bar. So it keeps you up to speed with where you're at in the bars. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. And so on. That's the purpose of that. And it's a really good idea that if a metronome that you use does indicate clearly where the first beat in the bar is. If you can say it, you can play it. I really believe that. Don't try and play any scale on any instrument until you can say the names of the notes in that scale without fault, effortlessly, at a reasonable speed. We can play faster than we can speak. We can move our fingers faster on an instrument than we can get our tongue around a variety of words. So I've set my metronome at 80 beats a minute. You can set yours at 60 if you're not familiar with the notes in a G major scale. You need to play it as, say them as slowly as you need until they just become like 2 plus 2. Hopefully if I say to you, what's 2 plus 2, your mind screams out, well that's 4. If you've had any education in basic mathematics, the answer to the maths equation 2 plus 2 should scream out in your mind before you can even say it. It's 4. So if someone says to you, what's the notes in a G major scale? In your mind, you should already know the complete answer. Your mind has the answer. It's just a matter now of getting those words out through your mouth. So the notes in a G major scale are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. G major is the first key in music that has a sharp. It has one sharp, F sharp. Now, I'm going to assume that you know your fingerings on the saxophone. I have some other tutorials. If you don't, check out my how to play the low notes and how to play the high note tutorials. I take you through every single note on the saxophone in those tutorials from F above high C down to B flat below low C, the complete standard range of the saxophone. So I'm not going to go over any fingerings in this tutorial. I've covered that elsewhere. What I want you to do before you try and play a note on the saxophone today is with me, but at home in your studio, get your metronome and set it at whatever speed you want it. I'm going to put the metronome on 80 beats a minute and I'm going to say as crotchets, that is as one note per beat, the notes of a G major scale ascending, going up and immediately coming down. And I'm not going to repeat a note at the top or at the bottom. I'm going to turn around, once I hit that high G, I'm going to say F sharp straight after it. Don't double up on the high note in your scale. Go straight up and straight down. This is what I want you to perfect. So after four, one, two, three, four. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G. How did you go? Could you say it with me without any stuttering or stammering or pausing or mistakes or wrong notes or just having to you know, give up the project because you just got stopped? If you weren't able to say those notes with me, pause the video now, pause this tutorial now and put in whatever time you need to get in your mind absolutely crystal clear the notes of a G major scale. If you can say it, you can play it. I'm now going to play those same notes 
that I said. I'm just I'm going to play it a little bit quicker. I'm not going to put the metronome on, but you could put the metronome on at 80 beats a minute and then play those same notes on your saxophone at that speed that you said them. But here are, here are the notes played a little bit quicker. I'm just going to tongue every one of them. That's a G major scale played ascending and descending, tonguing every note and not doubling up on any note. Once you perfect that, use your metronome to improve your speed. You know, start with 80 beats a minute or slower if you need to, one note per beat. And so on. Then say, okay, leave the metronome at 80 beats a minute, but play two notes per beat. One and two and three and four and G, A, B, C, D, E, and so on. So that would become like this. If you get good at that, leave your metronome at 80 beats a minute and try and play the notes as semi-quavers. Three, four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... We're now playing four notes to the beat. One, two, three. So you can hear that that's vastly, that's four times quicker than we started. Now I'm not saying that you need to double up your speed at every occasion. If you've been playing a while and you set your speed to start off at very slow, like 60 beats a minute, or even 80 beats a minute, you should be able to do what I've just done there. Double the speed as a separate exercise. But to get to that speed, you may need to practice for many weeks or months, gradually increasing your metronome speed when you're playing crotchets, one note per beat. So step up your speed from 60 beats to 70 beats, to 80 beats, to 90, to 100, to 120. When you, get, when you can play the scale without a mistake as crotchets, one note per beat at 120 beats a minute, well, you've doubled your speed from when you started at 60. So the metronome is a fantastic auditor, your own self-auditor, your running partner in the race, to guarantee that your technique, as far as speed goes, is improving. You'll notice that everything I've played today, I've played on one breath. That's the other thing to do is that you really should not take any more breaths than you need to sing or say phrases with your mouth when you're playing the saxophone. It should feel very much like speaking or singing when you play. So if I play these notes and go, you know, da 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 I shouldn't have to take any more breaths or blow any harder to play that at that speed on the saxophone. So you notice there, if I can say it, I can play it. So speed really relates to the clarity in your mind, your mind's ear of what it is that you're trying to communicate out of your body. The saxophone is just your external voice box. Now just to round out this volume one tutorial, remember that I said it's incredibly important once you can play a scale to immediately try and play songs, turn those scale notes into melodies. So some simple melodies in the key of G major that you can work on, once you can play that G major scale through one octave, so that's the eight notes on the way up and the eight notes on the way down, you've got all the notes you need to play some pretty famous songs, like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star required you to play every one of the seven notes in a G major scale. But instead of them being in the order of G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, they were in a different order. They were jumbled into the order of the melody, the nursery rhyme, the children's song, the famous children's song 
Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star. Now, I'll put the notes I played up on the screen for you, but it's not a matter of looking at notes and learning them off by heart. It's a matter of singing the pitch in your mind and getting that concept of the scale. Da, 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 da. Well, if that's what the scale sounds like, da, 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 da. It becomes a relatively easy relative pitch exercise, like climbing up rungs on a ladder or walking up a set of stairs. If the scale is one step at a time, da, 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 and each one of those steps numbered one to eight, how many steps do you have to leap to play the first note change in Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star? Da, 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 one, two, three, four, five. So the first pitch change in that nursery rhyme is from the note one in the scale to the note five in the scale. G, A, B, C, D, aha. There's the magic of playing your scales in a musical manner rather than just rapidly running up and down some notes. Just wiggling your fingers aimlessly on the saxophone. You're actually converting those steps, those preset steps that the Western music has called the diatonic scale, or in this case, the major scale, and working out where melodies are situated within those steps. I hope this tutorial has been of benefit to you. The topic is so broad that I will be doing some subsequent tutorials and we'll be expanding on these concepts further. And I'll give you some additional exercises to help you get the most from practicing your scales. As always, keep in touch via my website. That's www.brianhays.biz, B-I-Z. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And drop me an email if you have any fundamental questions about practicing your scales on the saxophone. Bye for now.